I'm Fred McMurray, and this is... Pillars, Pillars, Pillars of Franchising! Pillars, Pillars, Pillars of Franchising! Welcome to another episode of Pillars of Franchising. Today, I am going to be interviewing our very own Million Dollar Mentor, Jerry Akers. We're going to be discussing scalability and how do you know when is the right time and what do you need to do and how can you do it? So Jerry's going to offer us some expertise and advice on how to do just that. So whether it's building the brand you already have, whether it's multiplying territories, or maybe we're going to go outside of our brands and look somewhere else to build a portfolio a little more diverse. Stay tuned after we're on the street and Jerry and I will be right with you to teach you some more secrets to franchising success. Stay tuned. Hey, Jerry, welcome back. You're always on the road, always doing something fabulous to help people. What do you got going on this week? I'll tell you what, I am on the road and I've got a winter of travel related to franchising ahead of me, Kristen. So it's always good to see you and I love sharing what I'm working on with our audience. So thanks a lot for doing this again. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about, um, I think we're going to go back and talk about some scaling of businesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in our last show, I did a little bit of a generic overview of scaling a franchise. In other words, growing your franchise between whatever number of units you got today to another level, whatever level you choose. And, uh, you know, I got some commentary back and some questions back on that, that uh, tied into something else I'm working in. So the bottom line was there was some more interest in learning more. And I'm currently building a uh, three and a half hour learning session related to scaling and being a mumbo, which I'll explain in a minute, uh, for the International Franchise Association. And I'll be putting that session on at their convention coming up in February. So if any of you franchisees want to know more about this, if you want to be engaged in that conversation, we'll get some learnings, uh, go to the IFA website, sign up for the convention and sign up for my session. Um, but so here's what's going on, Kristen. Uh, I, I decided based on all of that, that, that I thought it would be a good idea to break this up into a five week series related to scaling. We've okay. got five different topics within that that we'll talk about. So today, I, I just kind of want to do an overview of what that looks like. Sure. So our listeners out there can uh, hopefully put it on their calendar to follow us for the next five weeks and beyond, of course. Yeah. Um, or, or to catch it online, uh, you know, in, in, um, in our library. So uh, if that's okay, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a question right out of the gate that I'd like to ask you because I think, um, you know, a lot of people listening haven't purchased a franchise yet and they're kind of knocking it around and um the one thing I've known when I help people buy a franchise or notice I should say is that some folks depending on where they come from career-wise immediately think about multi-units and some people are like geez you know I just really want to get started with one and then grow so when you put this together and you talk to people do you mostly find that people are, I'm going to use the word predisposed, which isn't quite accurate, but are they m- more people predisposed to do multi-unit or more um, deciding to do one and then expand? What do you what do you find and what should people be thinking in their heads as they begin yeah. this search? And if I had to put it into rough numbers, and this is, this is strictly a uh, hypothesis at this point in time, right? Sure. I would say it's probably about, 70 30 single unit when you're first getting in okay um and the 30 you know i often say most franchisees when there are most prospective franchisees don't think beyond their first unit they yeah they're dipping their toe in the water there's certain there's a certain amount of fear which is well placed you should yeah. be concerned um, you need to do your due diligence to make sure you write the, you make the right decision so so the vast majority of them are going to choose one unit That other 30%, the majority of that other 30% buys a multi-unit package because their broker or their friend dev person um, shows them the value in that, talks about the potential, 
yep. uh, helps them with some protected territories, really incentivizes them to buy more than one license, which is no, nothing wrong with that. But right. make sure you understand that when you sign up for that, you're also signing up for a, de it's, it's a development agreement, which means most franchisors are going to mandate that you develop those two or three or four units you just bought in a specific period of time. Right. In many cases, you've got a three-year window to develop, say, three. So the first one's going to take longer, so you're going to be developing those other two pretty quickly. And the, uh, the downside of this is if you don't get them developed in that three-year period, you might lose one or two of those licenses. You will have paid sure. for it, but they have the right to take it back because franchisors are trying to build these units as quick as they can and, and scale their business. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that that's um, to your to your point that you were uh, touched on. That's why it's so important when you're working with a consultant or a broker to really understand if that's the right fit for you. I mean, some people have cost constraints that cause them to either look at one unit or people have income requirements to say, I need to replace a four or $500,000 career income. And so in that case, the only way to get there may be through multi-unit franchising. Absolutely. And you may be able to open your first one while you're still working your job, maybe even your second one, but at some point in time, you got to do it full time. So you got to replace the income yeah. as you just said. And you know, you brought up a good point, Kristen. Um, there, just like everything in life, there's good brokers and bad brokers. Um, there's brokers that really do want to help you make a great decision and they're concerned about, you know, your future, not just selling you something, but the future. There's other brokers that are more in it for the bucks, more in it to make the sale. And you yeah. as a prospective franchisee don't really know which bucket you're falling into when you start making those inquiries. That's so, right. you know, I would say anybody that's a prospective franchisee looking at buying a franchise, if your friend of person is suggesting or even pushing you to buy a multi-pack that you do uh, you you uh, you do more research with existing franchisees. You're going to do qual uh, qualifying calls. Um, you you if you've already done those, go back and do some more of them after you get to this position and ask those franchisees what their thoughts are about buying a multi-pack. Uh, if they were in that situation, if they could look backwards, would they have done that? Would they have been nervous about it? Yeah. What were the hurdles they went through as they got to uh, multi-units, two or three, or whatever the case might be? That way you know beyond what the broker is telling you whether it's a really good decision. Right. Okay, excellent. Well, let's talk about these five points. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kristen, um, I'm guessing we've talked so much already. We've only got a few minutes left. but So, I'm going to just go over these pretty quickly. And it will open up the doors for our listeners to come back in the future. So the first subject matter is called Ready, Set, Go, Grow. And it's decoding the scale-up signal. So you think you want to scale up, but why? What, what keys you to scale up? What's driving you? Because that motivation might tell us a lot about how we can help you scale up and grow. Sure. So it, it's like many things in life. What's the end? look like? What, what are you trying to get to? And that'll help us put together a plan to grow or decide if you should continue along that path. And sure. as you know, and this is a good place to talk about it, do you want to be, uh, do you want to scale in one unit or do you want to have a uh, different, excuse me, one brand right. or do you right. want multiple brands? Yeah. Which comes back to Mumbo, right? Mumbo is an acronym for multi-unit, multi-brand operator. Uh -huh. so in other words, you own multiple units in one brand and multiple units in another brand. So there's a lot of ways to go with this. And we've got to make sure you, as the leader, and I'll use that quite often in this uh, training exercise, you as the leader can lead an organization that's going to have multiple units or multiple units in, in different brands. Because right. it's not the way it was when you own one or two brands. You're building a small corporation. Yeah. You've got to be a different sort of leader. You've got to have different skill sets or be able to develop different skill sets. And not everybody's going to be able to do that, Kristen. Yeah, for sure. And I think we had talked about previously with our friend um, Karen Kimsey Sword from Dale Carnegie, that there are a lot of profiles out there that you can take to kind of help determine those things. Again, something that a, a good broker might be helping you with. So excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. So and ready, the, set, grow. Yeah, ready, set, grow. The second subject matter is scale smart timing your franchise growth. 
Okay. So in, in that subject, what we would end up doing is analyzing where you're at currently and will your infrastructure absorb adding more units or different brands? Mm -hmm. so more importantly, because I think I can pretty much say most people will not be prepared from an infrastructure standpoint to do that. Yeah. So what are the changes we have to make or you have to make to get to that next level so that you're comfortable in scaling? In right. many cases, that may be using third parties to do some of the work that you've been doing in the past. For instance, maybe you've been doing your own payroll when you had one unit. Well, if you're going to have multiple units, it probably, yeah. not necessarily, but probably would be better to hire a payroll company. For sure. Perhaps you need to hire an accounting company to do the accounting that you've been doing. There's multiple ways we can look at that. Uh, worst case is we got to, or maybe best case, I should say, is we've got to help you develop your skill sets to a higher level to manage more of that throughput that will come with multiple units and scale. Sure, sure. So you're going to, you're going to be um, reviewing all of that data rather than putting it all together, right? Review yeah. what your total payroll number is instead of entering it all. That's back to what we say, you know, you're, you're, um, you're working on the business, not in the business as much. Yes, that's exactly right, because you don't have time. We often talk about my wife. God love her. She's, she's a phenomenal woman. She's got me to where I'm at in life. I owe her a lot. But, uh, you know, when we had uh, three to six units in that range, she knew every employee. She knew their kids. She thought it was amazing that she could go in and, you know, give them a hug and learn what's going on in their life and things like that. In fact, her job title still is Chief Hugs Officer yeah. because that's what she's good at. In yeah. addition to a lot of other things. But the fact is, as we continue to grow, she lamented the fact she didn't know every employee. And oh, sure. so for her, it was it was a little bit of a negative thing that we continued to scale. It, it took yeah. her out of her comfort zone. And if you are running a business alone, if you don't have a wife, excuse me, a spouse of some sort, a partner, uh, or kids that are helping you, uh, or a right-hand person that's helping you, and it's just you, you're going to have to get beyond that as you scale because yeah. you can't be all things to all people That's with right. multiple units. Yep. Yep. Good point. So, so we have ready, set, grow, scale smart. Yeah. Next one is picking winners, small, smart, multi-brand strategy. Excellent. So, okay. um, and I would take it to this level is we're going to break it down one more section and say, should you scale with the existing unit or the existing brand or should you add another brand? Some of some people will scale with another brand because there are no more licenses available in their area with their brand. So uh -huh. they're construed, uh, constru uh, they're uh, constrained. Um, so they have no choice if they want to grow, but to add another brand, but we need to decide what's the motivation there. Uh, and then how are we going to pick the right, brand for you if you do decide to do a multi-brand. So right. are you going to scale with the same one? Why or why not? If you want to add a multiple, uh, a different brand, what does that look like? And how do you choose one that will fit with your leadership style, the infrastructure we just spent time talking about, your long-term goals, sure. and, and something that is a comfort, comfortable fit for you as far as you feel like you don't have to relearn everything again. You can use a lot of the skills you've already developed with that brand, just like you did in your other brand. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because I talk to a lot of people who are interested in like home services brands. And the nice thing with that is, you know, you have a lot of these platform companies. Mine happens to be a neighborly company. And what the platform companies often do is try to integrate similar, if not the same technologies so if you were to buy what we call a sister company or a brother company, some of those will be streamlined already. Um, but if I wanted to go out and pick a different platform company to invest in, that's when I have to make sure I understand what we're talking. And to go from a home service business for me to go buy, say, a restaurant, whoo, my learning curve is completely different, right? And some people enjoy that, um, but it's a matter of understanding what your tolerance is. Um, the, the amount of time you have to learn, right? I mean, we're, a lot of us are really good at multitasking, but you know, you're talking some massive learning curves. Thank God for the franchise system that teaches you all of what you need to learn. Right. But still it can be a challenge. Kristen, you could not have written a better segue to the next title. Oh, good. What you just, it's spot on because the next title is 
crisis captain navigating <laughs> franchise challenges. <laughs> yeah. And literally in this, we're going to talk about becoming a firefighter. Yep. Because when you're a crisis captain and you have multiple units and even to a higher level, multiple units and multiple brands, yeah. you've got to be able to act quickly without stressing out, without blowing up, keeping your cool and logically and methodically solving problems. So can you do that? Let's start there. Will your personality allow you to do that? Because not everybody can. Right. They're frustrated with trying to solve those problems. They lose their temper. Uh, they lose their focus. Their blood pressure goes up. All those other kinds of things that are nasty and negative. So um, we're going to talk in very detailed analysis about how you become a crisis captain, if you can, and how you do it so that you're able to change your hat on the fly and make those decisions and answer questions and literally put out fires. Right. So real quick thing, the other day, I was dealing with something with one of my brands and another brand called and said they had no water in their facility. So no toilet, no sink, no way to wash hands, none of that stuff. So I had to literally switch from something completely different Yep. analyzing why they didn't have water, getting the right people involved, and so on, because your managers generally won't do that. That's up to you. So how do you make those changes on the fly? Yeah, for sure. Good example. Okay, so we have Ready, Set, Grow. We have Scale Smart, Picking Winners, Crisis Captain, and number five is? Blueprint for Success, Systems and People Power. All of your success as you continue to add this, Add units or add uh, multiple brands are related to your people. You have got to be able to put systems and people in place to manage this and to make sure it works. You cannot be all things to all people. You can't be in all places. You've got to be able to manage by extension through other people. So how do we put a blueprint in, in place that helps you hire, train, and manage the type of people necessary to manage something like that. Sure. And how do we put systems in place going back to payroll or any of those other types of things? How do we implement that into your organization when your current staff is used to A and now you're going to be doing B? So we're uh -huh. going to talk about a blueprint to get you there. And it will include not only that, but it'll also take you to the next level, which will show what the end result will look like once you get through this whole five-step process. That's awesome. All of that is going to be reviewed in the next five weeks. We're so, going to be going over each of them. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's great. So when if people want to kind of, obviously they can listen to this again to get the high-level overview. But starting next week, we begin the series. And that will start with Ready, Set, Grow, right? Right. Excellent. And so remember, it's Ready, Set, Grow, Scale Smart. Picking Winners, Crisis Captain, and a Blueprint for Success. So join Jerry and I over the next five weeks as he'll dive deeper into each one of these subjects. And Jerry, if somebody's already a franchisee or they want to learn more about it, I understand, again, that you're going to be covering this where and when in person. Yeah, at the IFA convention uh, coming up in Phoenix uh, in mid February, you can Google the IFA convention, go online and uh, sign up. If you're a franchisee, uh, come see us. We would love to do some more training with you, answer questions and so on. Well, I can tell you that after the snowstorm today, I'm signed up. Arizona in February, how bad can it be? Surrounded by franchise family and friends and learning great Tips, tricks, ideas, lessons learned from other people. I think it's going to be a great event. IFA always does a great job. And I'm excited that you're going to be getting involved with more franchisees um, and really helping people, you know, kind of move through their path forward to what it is that they're looking to do. So, Jerry, as always, thank you. Don't forget, five-week series with Jerry right here on Pillars of Franchising. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you all for joining us today on yet another episode of Pillars of Franchising. My name is Kristen Schelmetzi, and I'd like to offer a huge thank you to our Million Dollar Mentorship team, Ray Pillar, Jerry Akers, and Carrie Kimsey-Sword. A shout out to our producer, Fred McMurray, and Michelle Rumpel for helping us get everybody scheduled on the show and making things run smoothly behind the scenes. We will be right back next week. 
on Thursday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for more franchising success tips, tricks, and stories. Remember, when you're looking for a franchise and want to get out of that corporate grind, take a listen to the show. Visit us online at www.pillarsoffranchising.com. And remember, the dream starts here. Have a great day.